Mr. President. Senator from Nebraska. Thank you, Mr. President. We have an opportunity before us today to fund key priorities that we all agree are important. The American people elected all of us to do a job, and that job is to provide for the most important functions of our government. For far too long, politics has prevented us from committing the resources necessary to sustain the most critical part of our government, the military that keeps us safe. This is a chance to cast aside partisan differences and give the Department of Defense the stable and consistent funding it needs so it can rebuild readiness and execute its mission. Just this morning, Secretary Mattis testified before Congress saying, quote, I ask that you not let disagreements on our domestic policy continue to hold our nation's defense hostage, close quote. He is right. We cannot let these basic issues distract us from the job that we have all, under the Constitution, taken to provide for the common defense. I just came from a classified briefing with the Secretary, and he outlined the most important needs that we must fund for our country's security. So why not come together on issues that we can agree on? Six months ago, this chamber passed the FY 2018 National Defense Authorization Act with an overwhelming bipartisan vote of 89 to 9. In the time since, however, our military remains hamstrung under short-term measures that are standing in the way of modernization and readiness. And that's why I say to my Democrat co colleagues, Here's a chance for you to prove that you are serious about funding the military. Many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have already spoken clearly about their desire to support the troops. Last month, the senior senator from Vermont remarked, quote, our military leaders agree we cannot govern by a continuing resolution. The military cannot function under sequestration. The senior senator from West Virginia said, quote, we want our military to be funded properly so they can defend us. The senior senator from Montana said, quote, the uncertainty we have without a longer budget that goes to the end of the fiscal year is unacceptable. The senior senator from Connecticut said, quote, I hope there is bipartisan consensus among us on the Armed Services Committee and in the chamber as a whole that we need a strong national defense. And even today, the minority leader told this body that Democrats, quote, support increasing funding for our military. So why not act? There is a consensus that we desperately need to fix the readiness issues in our armed forces. Why not take that step today? and vote to provide the stable, predictable funding that the Department of Defense so seriously needs. When I swore an oath to defend the Constitution, I did it knowing that every day I hold this office, countless numbers of my constituents would be wearing the uniform and be in harm's way. Around the globe, you find Nebraskans, you find Americans, protecting and defending the United States. Each of us here represents people who sacrifice and serve American heroes. Today is a chance to show them that we have their backs because they have proven time and time again that they have ours. I urge my colleagues to put aside partisan differences and take the vote to support our military and the programs that are critical to the safety and the well-being of this nation. Mr. President, we also have a unique opportunity today to address another program that has a deep bipartisan well of support here in the Senate. Today, I visited with Nebraskans who made the trip to Washington to advocate for funding for community health centers. Across our nation, 
Community health centers are vital to keeping our children and our families healthy. Last year, nearly 85,000 Nebraskans received care at centers across our state during approximately 296,000 visits. These centers provide high quality care, compassionate care, and patient focused care. Community health centers in my state rank second in quality measures nationally and first in four other measures involving individual care. Their focus and their impact on the communities they serve is very impressive. We all recognize the importance of these health centers and I was proud to recently join my colleagues in the Senate in urging that funding be reauthorized so these centers can continue to provide the quality care that all Nebraskans and all Americans deserve. Mr. President, our military and community health centers are too important to be caught up in politics. As we find ourselves once again facing the prospect of yet another impasse, I urge my colleagues to join me in showing your support for these critical areas. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution makes clear what our job is provide for the common defense and the general welfare of the United States. Let's fulfill that duty today. I yield the floor.